Okay, um, <laughs> uh, basically, like I said, I'm gonna just keep doing these videos like time to time. Um, I know the last one was like really good, and this time, maybe not so good. <laughs> um, I went out with my friend and did what I usually do, you know, trying to live life as easily as I can. <laughs> um, but obviously I came home alone like I always do. And I just went back to reverting to like my place of fear and, and pity. Um, <laughs> it's really hard uh, walking the path of, of one who is, how do I say this? Okay, I'll just give a rundown of how my life has been. Since I was about four, I've always known that this life like around me has been like a hologram of some sort, not really real. Um, I was always different than my friends. I excelled at studies. I didn't have to try really hard and I just was really good at, at different things. In my, in my social setting, like I grew up with a bunch of people that were very like, you know, either studies were very important, money was very important, or just uh, being pretty was very important. Um, if you're looking at my face, it's because I've been like kind of like, uh, I've been beside myself for a while. Um, so, uh, with that said, um, you know, I kind of uh, always was different. I always had premonitions. Like, I could always see things within my future that were going to happen. And um, in terms of my gut, you know, they were pretty realistic. Uh, the reason my face kind of looks like this is because I was like, actually like, you know, just beside myself tonight, I just had a kind of like breakdown, you know. Um, you know, as I grew up, I was put with parents that were both alcoholics and, um, you know, I was kind of always, I'm an only child, first of all, and, um, I was always put in the middle of everything. I was always, um, you know, the psychiatrist for my parents. And uh, that took a lot out of me, you know, to not. I mean, I also had, like, a father who was very uh, distant. Even though he lived in the same house as me, very distant. I can see here that, yeah, I'm all smudged. Um, you know, I grew up with a lot of different people. I've commingled with all different races, all different breeds, all different types, all different, you know, and I've always been judged for that because people are like, how do you just talk to everybody you see? Um, around 14, I was given not just the gift of premonition, I was also very aware of different things and... I, uh, as I went through high school and went through everything, like, basically I fell into peer pressure and got into, like, smoking weed and drinking and all that bit, but realistically, um, all of those things brought me away from who I was. Um, it got to the point that, like, I was 16 and 17 and I didn't even like to wake up because I was like, what's the point of life? Why is it worth living? <laughs> And, um, it wasn't until I met this old man named Patty, he was like 80, and he brought me on to the whole conspiracy thing, he was a mason, and he basically was like, you know, you're very wise beyond your years, and he was like, it's unfortunate, you know, unless you're a Scottish right mason, to be a woman and to be accepted. So I fought to be one for years, and they didn't accept me, um... You know, I went through my teenagehood always living a lie. Like, no one knew that I came home at night. And, um, you know, I, I would see a lot of things that people never saw. 
Um, I mean, other than like meditation, I mean, I was able to get to a very beautiful place in my mind. And, um, you know, if people died, I could still sense them or I could speak for them. I could speak to them. And then my friend committed suicide and uh, after he passed away, he actually had passed on. I'm not talking about ghosts or apparitions, like that was like a normal thing. And then I actually had my friend who committed suicide and he just basically, when I was at his funeral, he, I, he cried, I cried out to him saying, you're not going to make it, you know, because I was raised Catholic and... At that time, well, I was always against doctrine, but I always had believed that there was a penance for, you know, being, you know, killing yourself. And uh, he came to me from yonder, not like the other spirits that would, you know, um, come to me through like, not just like I could see them, but their frequency I could, I could get. I could also feel their, their like closeness or I would actually get them in dreams and they could talk to me. This time it was more like um, just to say like, hey, I made it. And obviously he came from a different realm, wasn't from the realms I was used to. Um, I'm sorry, I look very like, I'm looking at myself and I'm kind of scaring myself. Um, in this last month, I managed to push away and get rid of a lot of people in my life. And uh, last night, I cut off my boyfriend because of the same thing. Um, no one ever gets me. <laughs> no one ever has gotten me. And um, I basically live the role of always being different. Um, like I said, with the 316 thing, that followed me for so long. I had messengers tell me, you know, God so loved the world, so he sent his only begotten son. For a long amount of years, I thought that I had to find Jesus. I thought that I had to find him somewhere on this world. I thought that for an instance, I was thinking, are they trying to tell me that I am? Um, I went through so much turmoil. I, I mean, there were times that I was actually in tune with... Um, like the higher and and I mean to a point that I actually thought that I was speaking to like an alpha female male um it looked kind of like DNA just flowing of beauty and um of color um it was very in tune with my inner self and you know there were times that I kind of felt like if anything that was the higher um what else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Well, other than messengers, I've had people just tell me, you know, um, I've had people vanish in front of my eyes. I've had uh, a woman that saw me in my dire straits and, you know, say everything was going to be okay. And um, I was with my friend Chris and I turned around and she was gone. That was normal to me. To Chris, not so much. Um... In my dreams, I've spent so many times in dungeons. I've been revered. I've been, in my dreams, there's a sense that, you know, who my higher self is, is revered. And that seems to be what I am on this world. Like, everybody doesn't get me. Everybody thinks I come from a place of judgment. And, um, I don't. Everybody tells me that I have answers to everything and I think I know everything and you know deep down inside all I'm trying to do is just reach people and um, try my best I mean I've had so many things happen to me and at the time when I was proposed to start my mission to be a messenger to be a light of some sort I so ran away and I hate myself for that 
and now that like I came back from this party like this is how my life is it's like basically everybody thinks I'm I'm I, I'm, I'm a, a vein or not vain. I, I think people just they really don't get me um I come from a true place of just wanting to help and because no one understands what it means to fully give themselves to somebody else they think I'm doing it for some alter ego and that kills me I, I honestly just want to be there for people I have lived my whole life having men mistreat me having men just make me their friend having men you know basically say that I'm too nice to be real and so I don't live a lot of my life alone you know um I have guys that come up to me and say, you're so beautiful, and this and this and that, and yet, um, I live my life alone. <laughs> I have girls that hate me every day. I have girls that have uh, either fucked my boyfriends or literally spit on me. I've gotten into so many fights. And deep down inside, all I can think of is they don't know what they do. But there's always a point where you try so hard to turn the other cheek. And, um, I don't know why I broke down today and I just, this is my life. <laughs> you know, everybody that I try to help thinks I'm, I'm not helping. I, I just don't know what to do. It's like, um, I know what I'm doing is right. I know that me being who I am is all I can be. But it is so hard. You know, I do live in a physical world where people crave money and love and passion and and sex and, and drugs and rock and roll. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning. And uh, when I come home, I just crave for someone who gets me. Someone that understands, someone that, you know, I, uh, I've done it all. I've partied, I've raved, I've traveled Europe, I've gone to Ibiza, I've, I've done all kinds of drugs. I've done everything that people would wish or maybe have done or haven't done. I've spent my whole life being alone. I have traveled alone for multiple months. I have got to dinners by myself forever. I have, you know, done everything alone. And I think at this point, I'm just so lost. I just, um, I came home and it was just a total breakdown. Because I uh, actually saw somebody online that um, reminds me of who I was at one point. And he didn't fear being alone. And um, I failed at my task and I was alone and I failed on my task again and I'm still alone. And I, I don't know what else to do. I could try to put these out there to to maybe hope that someone will see them or understand where I'm coming from on this path. I just try. I just try. I let go of somebody strong years ago. I let go of somebody who 